Cyber, and I am the moderator here today. I head up PropTech, the real estate technology uh, division for Tavant, and I'm very excited to be here with this group. Coming up next, we have a fireside uh, chat. So we brought in Liz Short to uh, join us on this chat. Liz is the VP of uh, TPO technology for Fairway. Liz has been someone we've worked with for just a short bit of time, but uh, I've created quite a bond with. Liz will be working with and talking in this next segment with Abhinav, who's head of product here at Tavon. So Liz coming to us from Chicago, Abhinav coming from Northern California. I'd like to welcome both of you today. Thank you for taking the time. And with that, I will actually pass it off to you, Abhinav. Uh, thanks, Brad. Uh, it's been exciting you know, on all these uh, interesting conversations, uh, starting with uh, Suresh and then Barry, Paul, Mohammed, and Peter. Uh, we're going to switch gears. You know, uh, we have been seeing some interesting trends in the market with how uh, things are shaping up in the in, in the current uh, uh, condition. And with Liz, first of all, Liz, uh, welcome to the conference and uh, congratulations on rolling out Driver. Uh, I think uh, um, it's it's been a kind of a journey for all of us there, <laughs> rolling that piece out. I know uh, Steve uh, rolled out uh, a, a, a an update uh, late last year, but since then we've uh, made significant advancements. So, first of all, uh, what are your thoughts about uh, the wholesale business, the way you see it uh, in in the current situation? Absolutely. Well, thanks so much, guys, uh, for having me here today. I, I really appreciate it. Um, you know, definitely, uh, it's, it's, it's a different uh, world than any of us expected to see this year. Um, but we really see the wholesale business uh, going very, very strong. And we're really optimistic uh, about the future of it. You know, and really here at Fairway, we feel like we've just get, gotten started. Um, so we're really excited about that. Uh, really, in the wholesale or third party origination world, it's about two things. Um, it's about customer service and it's about closing loan packs, right? Um, the great thing is that Fairway Retail uh, does both of those things really well. Um, so we have a really great partner in them to look towards. Uh, we've really realized that technology is the key to our success long term. Uh, in the wholesale market. And we've invested a lot uh, in that area for our wholesale line over the last two years. In fact, I think we've probably increased it almost tenfold, the amount of resources, money, um, and time we're putting into that. So we're really excited about, about where that's gonna take us. Um, we have a very solid roadmap, uh, thanks to your guys' partnership over the next 12, uh, 12 months, um, that's gonna help our brokers um, both have efficiencies um, that, that enhance the process and you know our overall goal is just the customer experience and creating a, a better way to manufacture the loan for our customers wonderful so Liz uh, in your role and you're an, you're an innovator you know uh, you have uh, been in this uh, uh, in this journey with us for a long time but you know when we, when we when we think about rolling out technology innovation uh, first of all I, 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 I this is a two-part question one is how do you see uh, uh, internal adoption when there's a when there's a technology or a process change and then in your in, in specific to your wholesale business how have you driven adoption with your broker partners Absolutely. Um, great question. Adoption is the name of the game, right? We can do all the best work behind the scenes and if we can't get people to use it, uh, you know, really, what's the point? Um, you know, adoption, I think, is a challenge for everyone and we've definitely had our challenges. Uh, I'll start with internal first. Um, you know, I really think that the key to internal adoption is engaging folks early, right? If you wait until it's built and you're training uh, the people who are going to be using it, I think you've missed 90% of of the value that they can add. Um, I know in previous lives, I've sat around uh, and had new technology rolled out to me and just thought, who did they ask? <laughs> right? um, come on, who did you call? So I think really what we've tried to do and what we've learned is the sooner we can ask the folks who are actually using the system um, about it, the sooner we can get ideas in front of them, get their feedback, um, you know, the better that process goes. And ideally in our world, that internal user training at the end sh should hopefully be 
um, just kind of a refresher of what they've asked us for, right? And, and showing them how we've been able to achieve it. So definitely a journey on that part. Um, as far as our external partners, definitely a different set of challenges, um, but challenges nonetheless, right? Uh, I think Peter just said uh, that change is hard, right? It's hard to get people to, to embrace change. And, you know, I found that to be true, even if it's something that people want. Um, our customers almost categorically went into this excited about the change, excited about the opportunity. Um, but when we initially went live with our new product um, and we're in a pilot phase, you know, we did see some pushback from some of our users. Um, you know, I think number one, you have to remember, especially in the TPO world, our users are not a monolithic customer, right? They could be a giant bank that has a, a bunch of different folks that work in them, or it could be, you know, a single person sitting in a room, phone ringing off the hook. Um, and so really customizing um, our rollout and our training to fit those different needs have been helpful. Um, I also, you know, really think that the folks that hold out, uh, at least in our case, really were not opposed to the new system it's the change part that's hard, right? Like we said. So stepping in, empowering our change champions internally um, to have that support system that they could come in and go to has really been what's key for us. Um, and then just getting as much feedback as possible um, and, and responding to it as quickly as we can. Well, that's, that's, that, that's a very interesting point you make. I'm, my, my next question uh, is kind of, uh, we've seen a very diverse, uh, responses to tech innovation over the last couple of years, especially in the in this business, right? On one end, uh, there are large players who have grown their wholesale presence uh, phenomenally, right? You know, uh, the top five producers, uh, you know how, how their numbers are. But on the other side, we've seen um, tech innovators, uh, uh, you know, startups uh, trying to address this market space uh, not do so well. So what do you think are the key things that you as an innovator keep in mind when you bring uh, tech innovation that has to, you know, that has these nuances of, you know, changing market conditions, dealing with uh, external entities and partners, uh, what, what goes in your world that, that you think makes you successful? Absolutely. Great question. Um, so I think, you know, in technology, we love to come in and disrupt, right? Disrupt, disrupt. And I think that the mortgage industry, at least historically, has had a lot of challenges, um, whether it's regulations around how much we can go electronic or, you know, really once those regulations were removed, um, just adoption and, and, and willingness to invest in it has, has really drug our industry, I would say, behind. Um, you know, I, I've, I've used some of uh, some of the other tech ventures out there in the past in previous lives. Um, and you know, I, I think really what, what I focus on when we're trying to innovate is you have to give uh, a, a base level uh, of, of what the users expect, right? There's a very um, standard set of products, a standard set of uh, uh, things that are needed, right? I need to be able to provide X, Y, and Z to my customers. If I can meet them, that, if I can meet that, then what they're going to do is they're going to want to see the bells and whistles. Mm -hmm. I think the problem is if you start with bells and whistles and then promise that you're going to get somewhere, um, that trust is very quickly eroded just due to the complexity and the speed that is necessary in our industry. So I like to say, and I like to try and have our team really keep it um, basic, make sure that we have our foundation right, and then build from there. And I think that's really what makes us successful um, and other, uh, other successful um, companies out there that are, are, are uh, still around and, and, and still performing strong in, in, with their technology. Uh, the side question, you know, uh, or, or a step two question on that, uh, you know, when you when you think about uh, uh, the business today, six months from now, twelve months from now, uh, the fact that a, a lot of us uh, uh, will continue to work remote, you know, and you've got people uh, in your operations uh, who are who may not. Be able to get back to an office environment for a long, long, long time. Uh, are there any key focus areas from a fairway perspective that you keep in mind that when I, when you roll out new features uh, from a technology perspective, how is it going to take care of the need that this feature now is not going to be used from within an office environment? You're, you're, you're at home, so there are, there are different kinds of security. Yeah, so I'm going to go back to Barry's initial conversation. Absolutely. There are security features and aspects that you deal with. You've got external partners, you've got internal partners. 
uh, working on this together. Are there any special considerations that you've had to make over the last uh, couple of weeks uh, rolling out new features? Sure. So, I mean, I, I think our, we've definitely had some tweaks on the features that we've rolled out. I think what we've been, um, what I've been really happy about is that we've really been able to continue on our roadmap and our plan, which hasn't really changed even with the current crisis. Um, but of course, there's ha we've had to make some tweaks and been flexible along the way, right? Right now, um, my industry is changing daily. Um, the leadership calls and says, can you help us with this? Can you help this flag this file? Can we help try and prioritize these? So those are the shifts that we're really trying to accommodate and accommodate quickly, um, you know, as, as well as, as keep the momentum going. Um, we've been really lucky on, on my team. Uh, we transition, I, I would say, almost seamlessly to a remote work environment and plans are for us to stay that way for the rest of the year. Um, it's going really well and so why rock the boat at this point in time. Um, but definitely having to shift, pivot, and quite honestly, being very supportive of our business partners who are dealing with just an incredible amount of business right now, which is a good thing. Um, and they're transitioning to a work from home as well, too. So, you know, really prioritizing the things that makes their job easier are what we've been trying to shift around and help out um, as, as we get through the past 60 days of, of this <laughs> I, I, I'm going to uh, shift a little bit from uh, technology to the business side of the equation. You know, we, uh, uh, again, we've, we've, uh, uh, Mohammed was talking about this entire forbearance uh, stuff at, when Paul and Mohammed were in, the, in their conversation. Uh, how do you see that impacting the wholesale business overall, not just for Fairway, but, you know, uh, are brokers concerned uh, uh, you know, with the fact that now certain loan products may no longer be, ava be available given the current market situation? or certain borrowers may not qualify, things of that kind. And also the fact that, uh, are you doing anything uh, uh, in being able to identify, uh, you know, uh, uh, potential forbearance style customers, uh, you know, who, who, who may make uh, uh, use of this situation, like refinance and then, you know, sure. apply for forbearance. How do you see that playing into your world? Well, I mean, I think overall, and Paul spoke to this, you know, the initial, this is new for all of us, right? We really don't know what, what's going to happen, but the initial reports are very positive when it comes to forbearance. Um, about 80% of the folks who have entered into a forbearance continue to make their mortgage payments. So I think that's a very positive thing and, and will definitely help mitigate, um, you know, those impacts long term. Um, but, you know, I think we do have to be realistic uh, about what that means and, and, and how we pivot. It and, and how we look at things. You know, I know, I, I know mortgage companies everywhere are trying to figure out how to stay ahead of this. And honestly, um, you know, I, I don't know if there is a tech solution out there that's in place right now. But what we can do is, like I said, we can help identify um, the, the, the loans that come into question, right? When we have certain buckets of loans that um, possibly the investors or GSEs aren't sure what to do with, um, that helps us identify those. And most importantly, importantly, go back to our broker partners and they can go back to their borrowers to let them know that, hey, there's something that could be at risk. How can we work with you um, to do what we need to do to get you a loan, right? Or what do you need to do, um, either getting your credit, your income, uh, in, your, your job right back in place so we can get you back in that house. Um, you know, rates aren't going <laughs> any higher. We don't expect anytime soon. I think we're going to be in a low rate environment. So, you know, for some folks, uh, we believe the best thing to do for them individually as well too is, is make the best decision for their credit. Um, and yeah, there are folks out there that are, are leading people astray, right? Easy money. And we saw this, uh, we saw this uh, in, the, in the previous financial crash as well too, right? Yeah. I think the folks that have been in the business and been in the industry understand uh, understand that the pitfalls and you know we just really try and help educate our brokers who can educate their borrowers what all this means to them because they're the ones that are really impacted at the end. So uh, you know uh, and, and, and uh, you know, going in with that flow uh, you know, there is the you, you mentioned there's you already have a strong 12 month roadmap. What are some of the conversations you're having with uh, your tech teams and and even uh, uh, your, your partners at Tawan uh, around tech innovation that, that you think are going to be, that you can share first of all in this call and, uh, and are going to be meaningful uh, over the next 12 month uh, period. 
Absolutely. Well, our roadmap has always been, uh, our technology roadmap has always been uh, a 10 on 10 customer experience. That's what we're going for. Everything that we look for is, is in, in result to that. Um, I think really what that means, um, not necessarily has shifted over the past 60 days, but we've, able, we've been able to help have that come into focus a little bit more. Um, what I mean by that is really prioritizing for our internal partners, um, any automation, um, anything that we can do to help them get the loan through the process faster, right? Giving them the ability to get through more loans, but more importantly, have those conversations with our brokers who are our business partners, right? We're a, we're a B2B service and in my line of work and, and help them maybe structure those hard deals, maybe answer the questions that they don't know the answer to, you know, really, really free them up in that way. So I think that, that those things are, are very exciting. Um, really what we are trying to do is build uh, an end to end one stop uh, shop bro experience for our brokers. Um, like I said, uh, you know, a lot of our brokers are a single person, right? It's truly the American dream, right? It's a mom and pop shop, um, you know, being able to be out there by yourself and make it happen. And so we really want to be able to, to help those folks and, and be there for them. And so focusing on anything that can help with their efficiency, help them be more technological savvy in this new world that they have to be, right? Um, those are all things that, that, that we're trying to focus on, uh, including some really cool uh, disclosure pieces uh, that, that we'll be rolling out later this year in partnership with you guys as well, too. Uh, you know, and, and uh, one small uh, 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 sub, sub question there. Uh, I think I should have asked this uh, uh, as a first, the first question. What do you think uh, sits on the top of the mind of a broker when they decide to do business with a lender partner? Like, you know, what are uh, two or three most important things that uh, brokers are most concerned about uh, when they choose where are they going to do business, uh, you know, and then who are they going to partner with? Absolutely. Um, I, I really think it's, 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 it's three things. Um, it's how, how fast they can close a loan, right? How fastly can you close this? How fastly can we get this to the closing table? So speed to close, definitely. Um, I definitely think price is important, right? What, 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 what can I get for the rate? Those types of things. Um, but more and more, I truly believe that technology is, is what they are looking for in a broker partner. In fact, you know, we've, we've been out talking to a lot of customers and uh, I ask that question a lot, it's especially uh, price versus technology. Where do you land? And I'm not going to say it's 100% of the time, but, you know, pretty close. Um, they understand the benefit of, of speed, right? And of, 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 of intuitive technology um, to their business, right? I want them to be able to log into a uh, fairway driver, uh, do what they need to do and get off of the computer and back off the phone, on the phone, right? Because that's where they're gonna be making money. So really, I think uh, those are the top three areas um, that, that really are, are driving where our customers are sending their business. And, and, and we try obviously um, to, to, to be the best we can in all three of those areas. Wonderful. Uh, one final question before I open up uh, for uh, our, our participants and other attendees to ask you for the questions. Uh, how has your experience been working with Tavant? I mean, it, this is a Tavant conference. I had to ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> I should expect that question, right? Um, no, all kidding aside, um, I, I've worked with a lot of vendors and I've worked with a lot of really great vendor partners. Um, but I really think, you know, I think collaborative is probably the best word that I can use to describe what we've done. And, and, and I mean that in the best way possible. Um, you know, you guys have not only been our vendor and, our, and a great vendor partner, but I mean, you're there at the table, uh, helping us build our vision, helping us build our roadmap. And, you know, I really think it's important um, when a company such as Fairway uh, chooses to engage as a, in a venture and, and pick that vendor partner, you have to know what you need. Um, and you have to be able to communicate that to your vendor. And um, I know I'm not shy about telling you guys what I need and what <laughs> You guys definitely always step up to the plate. So thank you so much for that. I, I appreciate your, uh, your, your industry leading ideas as well as um, your partnership and, and your finding solutions to whatever challenges I can throw your way. <laughs> well, I, I think it's been an ex excellent partnership. Uh, we here uh, appreciate as, uh, as much as you do on your side. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Uh, Brad, I don't know if there are any other questions that people uh, want to ask Liz, uh, but... Uh, it's, it's, uh, thank you for so much for the conversation, Liz. This Absolutely. Yeah, there Thanks, are a handful of questions, and I'll make sure to get them to you, Liz. You and Thanks. Absolutely.
Uh, the conversation flowed. We kind of pushed right up on time. So that was great. I wanted to thank you both for taking the time to come in and speak with us today. It really means a lot to have an executive partner of ours take the time to come in and talk about some of the technical challenges and, the, and obstacles they've overcome and really how that's been a success story in the end. So Liz, I thank you so much. Abhinav, I thank you as well. Thank you so much, Liz. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. You too.